love to have you comment and because we do I mean we love these calls we look forward to Mondays when we get to have these live calls so if you do like and comment then we know that you're here and and listening yeah. and yeah. I'm pulling it up on my phone right now so that if you do have any questions as we're going through you can um, just go ahead and type them underneath and we'll get to them by the end yeah. And um, as always, we talk about what we're dealing with in life, right, on those calls, because that's the best way to share, right? It's not to talk about something or have a great uh, theory about something else. It is actually to go through everyday life. You have Abby's life, you have my life, and we share what we're dealing with, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So today, um, I moved to Spain, and um, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. so you. I moved to Spain, and I don't speak the language, but here I am. <laughs> so, yeah, and not only to Spain, but to a very small island <laughs> of the coast of Spain near Africa. So I'm on the sea, and so I'm dealing with this adventure, right? This excitement and fear about, all right, I uh, rented a car, I took my two dogs, I filled up the car, and off I went, drove to Barcelona, took the ferry, came to this apartment on the sea, and um, now I am dealing with having a, my first parking ticket because I parked in the wrong place in Spanish, getting <laughs> a phone in Spanish, uh, the electricity in my name in Spanish, shopping in Spanish, which I do not speak. So, <laughs> and wondering if adventures is not overrated. <laughs> I've lived in South Africa, England, France, Los Angeles, Washington DC, New York, Morocco, and Algeria. I think no, maybe I should put down some roots somewhere, right? And stop <laughs> being a gypsy. All right, so that's what I'm dealing with. And Abby, you say what you're dealing with. Well, I, um, and I, Josh and Malou are here. Hi, Josh and Malou. Thank you for telling us that you're here. Um, I am dealing with uh, death and grief. My, um, I was with my grandfather for a week and my grandmother and my grandfather is sick and um, just taking care of the two of them. And literally as I got on the plane, I got the message that my uncle, my grandfather's brother was in the process of dying and he died um, in the eve that, e that later that evening. So um, I'm in the process of really honestly for the first time in my life, um, which I'm blessed to say, I know a lot of people have dealt with a lot of grief and loss at many stages of life, but this is the first time I'm really going through it in a deeper way. When I was young with my other grandparents, I was quite young and didn't quite, you know, have the experience. So, so, so it's funny, right? So I'm 30 years older than you, Abby. But we're dealing a little bit, both of us, with the same space, meaning you are confronting the third generation up, right? Yeah. Is it second or third? Grandfather, your parents, yeah. and you, that makes yeah. what? One, two, three, yeah. right? Or two yeah. generation up, you're the third one. That's right. Um, going, which is normal in the 80s, 85, right? It's um, life, right? Yeah. And um, there is a lot of unknown, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of loss, a lot yeah. of um, pain. And I'm dealing with ending something and yes. creating something else, right? So Absolutely. I thought we would look at it in a different way and talk about I remember when I was your age and I realized that I could be mature. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's um, so for everybody listening on the call, if you're in a transition of some sort like that, you will relate. But Abby, I remember 
I think I was a bit younger because I had the death of my husband. So I just grew up really fast, right? Yeah. But um, uh, there is a point in life where you realize you are in charge. Yeah. You don't have to do what you were taught, what you learn, what you were contributed to. You can actually create a whole new blank canvas and create your own principle, your own ideals, your own values. Absolutely. And there will be nobody to back you up, back you up maybe, or, or support you maybe, but it's you and only you. Do you yeah. know that space I'm talking about? Yeah, it's brand new for me. I do know what you're talking about and I think I wouldn't have even six months ago, but yeah, I do. You know, I was talking to you earlier on for people listening on the call and you said, this week I spent with my grandfather and grandmother was the best thing I've done in my life. And when I heard that, I realized, all right, there is Abby fully stepping. And I'm not saying that pejoratively or, or arrogantly, right? But fully stepping about into being the originator adult in charge of your life. You are fully going to choose which way it's going to go and what kind of human being you're going to be. And it does take some shading. Yes. Thank and you for is. reflecting that exactly because that is the first time I felt that feeling of like, I'm choosing this and I wanna be this person in this situation. And it was conscious. And yeah. when you reflected it, it felt right, the words that you were saying. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, when we young, um, we go on vacation, we do that, we dabble there, we float a little bit, right? And then oh. there is a time, a moment in each of our life where we start building. We start putting structures and, 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 trust me from my ex vast experience, and then you build, you put a structure, you put down roots, you create something, and then it all disappears and you start again. <laughs> but you know, it's difficult, right? So the space I'm going through is, um, it's both exciting and frightening, right? It's like any adventure, whoa, exciting and frightening. But I experience in life, you either expand or you contract. Mm. And if you are not willing to put everything into the game and shake it, you know, how do you say you could put everything into the pot yeah. and shake, 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 and then yeah. start again, right? Yeah. I think we can't expand. Mm. So are, are you saying in a way you, in order to expand, you have to get to some kind of emptiness or some kind of like, Look, that's, I, sort of I, that's what I'm present to between you yes. and I, right? I rented my apartment in New York for a year. So it's not like I sold it and I'm not going back or whatever, but it's, it's rented for a year, right? So there is a step, a risk to be taken. Ah, uh, yeah. And the risk is going into the unknown. And like every single risk, you have to give up something. So when you stand up, you have to give up sitting down. Mm. I wanted an adventure this year. I want to write my second book. I can work anywhere on the internet. I wanted the sea. Okay, well, I got it. <laughs> right I had to give up the comfort of being in my home in New York yes what did you have to give up to be 
the person that so contributed to your grandfather and grandmother? If you look, you will have had to give up something. Well, I had to give up first my idea of how I thought the year was going to look. First of all, I had to just sort of give up my plans. But more deeply than that, I had to give up my uh, I don't know, I had to give up my sense of selfness, like in a way I had to just as go a and granddaughter, as yeah. a granddaughter and the daughter. Yes, I just kind of had to go and, and observe and find where I fit with what they needed. And I had to sort of develop a space of um, like a deeper generosity than I think I've had to in other situations. I had to just sort of let go of my selfness and go to their space and find where I fit while providing leadership though, because I've spoken to you last week and you provided in leadership and your grandfather has always been the strong, reliable, the one that created the whole family and yeah. all that, right? Oh yeah. But this time you look for a way to contribute and provide leadership in your family. That's why I call it maturing. You're stepping into a new role. So you had to give up the very comfortable granddaughter, daughter role. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's so true. Yep. I even they, had to push a little in spaces where I think it might, especially for my grandmother, might have been a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And kind of step into that. Yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, it doesn't have to be uh, bad, right? Those spaces of restaking. It's just very uncomfortable because there is a total uncertainty and you have to let go of what you knew and you were comfortable with. Mm. Hm. I yeah. don't know if there's anything else we can say about it. I think the other thing, as you're saying that, you know, my grandparents, I'm like I said, I'm very privileged to have had young grandparents. I mean, they've always been spry and, uh, you know, present and talk and travel. And now they're, they're becoming older. It's clear, you know, in their systems. And so I think in that space of loss, there's also a letting go of, um, just a letting go of, of the identity that you have, all of us together, like the configuration changes. Yes, of what was. Yeah, and like yeah. letting that be the past, yeah. you know. So how I uh, cope with all that, Abby, is first I have a context, and I know you have the same, is that I'm committed to, at the end of my life, on my deathbed, look back at my life and say I had an extraordinary life, extraordinary, meaning in, not in results or anything, but in taking risk, right? Because yeah. life, all of life, if somebody wants to know what life is, the best way to say what life is, it's an experience everything about it so the more you experience the fuller your life will be mm -hmm. and experiences go the whole spectrum right from joy to despair right yes. and everything yes. in between so when you mature you take risk this is what you surrender to to the very nature and essence of life which is experiencing Mm. And for that, you need to let go of the experience you had in the past. Otherwise, you cannot have a new one. Wow. Right? So holding on to anything. So I'm a bit extreme, but then I'm, I'm you know, single. I don't have children, so I can just go and move country with my two dogs. <laughs> right? it's, it's not everybody can do that. But in everyday life, 
it is so important to shake up the routine, mm. the habits. Just, you know, just to get another experience. If you always go to the same place to have a coffee, just go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes. If you always go on the same walk, just go and discover another one. Mm. Um, if you always speak to your partner the same way, just try something else. If you always make love the same way, just do something different. I think it is uh, the way to, to constantly expand and elevate, right? So we elevate through experiences. Mm. And I think also that's what keeps us young. Is just being like fully alive and present in yeah. the moment yeah. of life. And yeah, and, and the last thing, Abby, uh, sorry, it's coming to me as we're talking, right? Yes, you know, please. Yeah. You need to choose it, right? You need to choose it and choose your choice. So in your situation, you need to choose this new level of family relationship. That choice is, is extremely important, right? Otherwise, life will throw you into the situation you are in. But mm -hmm. if you don't choose what is, you will suffer. Yes. And I, on the other hand, I'm choosing the circumstance. I'm creating my own circumstance, right? So there is some times in life where in your situation, you don't choose the sickness of your grandfather. It is happening to you, but then it might be happening, but you choose it because it is what is. Yeah. And yeah. I create the breakdown of the move yeah. consciously and with awareness. It, it's, uh, it's still a choice. Yeah. I see totally what you mean. And I see this is the, and for folks listening, I can say that in, you know, I've had the privilege of being with Sophie in your space now for almost two years, I think, which is amazing. And you always talk about choice, right? Like anyone who's been here and has listened to Sophie speak, you hear about choice. And for me, it's taken time. Like you said, the maturity process, like it started small for me. And this was the biggest choice I've made. And the reason is not because of what I did, but it was because of how I wanted to be in, in the situation. And it took time. And I think the more you choose those small things, like you said, choose a new coffee place, choose a new walk. It's like that experience of choosing gets embedded slowly into your system. You practice, know? Right, it's practice. Practice, yeah, practice. So um, Abby, to complete the call, because I think we've been going on for a while and I'm conscious of people's time, but um, you know what I'm very, very present to? I've met a lot of new people here and um, I uh, met a philosopher that uh, was outraged with, uh, good outrage, not bad outrage, uh, just an exasperated with a conspiracy theory, with the opinion and judgment about the government with pointing the fingers, right? I don't know, um, it's the same everywhere. Everybody's unhappy, it's a heavy time. It's, uh, we're looking for, you know, we're pointing the figures at what doesn't work and the mistake that was made. For example, in France, they, they didn't have any mask at the beginning of COVID. So they actually lied saying, oh, you don't need them <laughs> because they had destroyed all the stock. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but the thing that this man said that really spoke to me, he said, you know, this is not where you need to look. That won't make any difference. Mistake gets made and government just make mistakes and they people are inauthentic and people just go and do weird things. 
what we're going through is a shift from homo sapiens to homo spiritus. Mm -hmm. And I so rejoice because this is what we say on every single call. We are shifting from homo sapiens to homo spiritus and any shift, any birth happens in pain. Yeah. So choose the shift, everything that is happening in the world, Russia, China, the US, everything, um, Afghanistan. I mean, it's, it's just everywhere, right? The climate, we have a global crisis at all level. That's what the shift looks like. Mm. And for those women that gave birth, remember birth is always in pain. Right, so just keep the context going. It's all okay. It's all going to turn out. We are elevating ourselves to be related to the spiritual. Homo spiritus is the five senses plus being profoundly related to who you really are. It's so beautiful. Thank you for that context, Sophie. Yeah. All right, darling. Oh, we want to tell everybody that we have the art of being related coming oh, up. Perfect. Now, right? Yes. Yeah. So can you share a little bit, Sophie, just for folks listening, we have the next four session seminar series starting on February 21st. It's going to be, we love the seminars. It's so fun. We do four weeks. It's an hour and 15 minutes each session. And this one is on the art of being related. So just before we go, Sophie, could you quickly just share what that? But it's exactly uh, funny enough, I didn't plan it, but it's exactly yeah. the conversation we just had, right? So we're going through a global crisis and the global crisis, you could say the source of it is a not knowing that all of life occurs inside of relationships. The, really, the global crisis is not the um, system, the politics and all that. No, it's like as human beings, we do not understand the, the working of the relatedness between nature and how you feel and the universe and spirit and others. And so we're going to look at the art of relationship at the very essence of life, at the very source of life for four sessions. So fun. I yeah, get just as excited. Like I'm always excited for the seminars. So this one I'm really looking forward to. It's perfect. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. It's going to be just really great uh, to get present to the link between everything and everything else until we get to oneness, right? Because the experience of oneness is what we all crave. Yes. But to get this experience of oneness, you need to just get clear about the art of being related. Mm. That's so, so great. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So I'll put the link, the link uh, underneath the link that will link you to the thing <laughs> underneath <laughs> um, after this in the comments. And um, don't forget that we have a choose your own price option. So we have three different prices. You can, whichever price you pick will get you access to the whole seminar series. So um, should be accessible and we'll put it underneath after this. Let me check comments before we go. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, this is great. Thank you, Josh and Malu and Kim. Thank you for just being here and commenting underneath. We don't have questions, but um, Kim was just reflecting back, practicing letting go. And if I stand up, I have to give up sitting down. Um, thanks, Malu. Yeah, letting go and giving up our powerful distinctions. Yeah, that's that's great. Thank you all for being here and participating in the conversation. Right. And, and if anybody has any request for us to talk about anything you're dealing with, as we're putting our life in, if you want to put your life in, tell us, I'm dealing with that. Can you talk about it? Yeah. We'll be delighted to do that. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. Big hug. Talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.